Upgrades. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another JVS movie review. Here we have one of the most anticipated films of the award season of the year. Basically, because it's a remake of, of a film that generations of black people grew up on. And this is The Color Purple. This one is directed by Blitz Buswali. It is starring Fantasia, Taraji P. Henson, uh, Diana Brooks, Coleman Domingo, and Corey Hawkins. Here's a quick synopsis if, for some odd reason, you've never seen The Color Purple. <laughs> a decade-spanning tale of love and resilience and of one woman's journey of independence. Celie faces hardships in her life and ultimately finds extraordinary strength and hope in unbreakable bonds of sisterhood. Now, if you've seen The Color Purple, especially the film, you come into this with expectations on what you're going to receive in this film. If you've seen The Color Purple musical, you can kind of throw out those expectations because you kind of already know how this film is going to move because you've seen the musical and you know the differences from the musical to the actual film. I think for an audience of people who have not seen the musical, this movie is going to be a shock to your system a little bit here. It, it's going to be harder to digest for those people to get into it. Now, just from a technical standpoint, and we're going to start with love because that's the best way to start, especially when you're talking about such a classic work like The Color Purple. Daniela, Daniela Brooks, who also played Sophia on Broadway and was amazing because I saw her on Broadway play Sophia. She's amazing as Sophia on Broadway. She's just as good in this film. She is the emotional center and emotional force of this film. And it's something that as years have gone by, the character of Sophia has become just that for The Color Purple. And... Ms. Brooks knocks it out the park with her performance here. While for me, it's not remotely close to being on the level of what we saw Oprah do with the role. For its time, for where we're at now, it's a solid, really good performance. It really reminded me of uh, Jennifer Hudson in Dreamgirls, where it didn't necessarily blow you away, but it is a strong, powerful performance that is going to evoke a lot of emotions out of people when you see it. For me, unfortunately, that is where the praise ends for the cast for me. I think this is this is a film where it's so much to live up to. And even when you have amazing actors like Coleman and Taraji and you have Fantasia who plays Ceiling on Broadway and play, played the role pretty good on Broadway. Not nearly, maybe not nearly as strong or as good as uh, Cynthia when she took over the role. And we got a, a rehash of what the play could be when Cynthia took over that role and how everything changed. I think because of that, we, we miss a lot of the emotional beats that you got from Whoopi's performance in the film, but also Cynthia's performance on the stage when she plays Celia. I don't think you get those great moments from Fantasia at all through this film. It's one of the one of the things that's going to let you down. Uh, Coma Domingo as Mister is is a character I never believed in this film, and it's very weird to say that he is Coleman is on between Rustin and. Even though Sing Sing is not going to come out for the public to see this year, but it played at Toronto, the film festival this year, and he was amazing in it. For everything I've seen him do, that was amazing. For here with Mister, it just falls short from a character that is really central to being the movie's villain and the purpose of what helps evoke Celie's strength. You, ne I never felt that through this entire film. Again, it that's the letdown. The letdown here is that these extremely powerful characters that have been played either on screen or on stage multiple times by so many different people, here it just felt like at times they were just running notes until they got to the big song moments for them. 
and it because of it it just does not have the emotional weight to really carry this story this is a powerful story as we're dealing with celia and everything that we get of her growing up having to go through everything we know the story about the children that she has like this is stuff if you've seen original color purple you know exactly where the story is going to and while it still differs from that i don't think it differs from that in enough where you can leave the emotional aspects that this film leaves out of it this is a big number like a big broadway type film number it is very reminiscent of a lot of possibly other musicals that while good when they're on film they're good but boy do they lack something that really brings it home to you kind of like uh chicago if you saw that when that was made into a film it was the exact same thing where it's 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 decent it, it gets you to where you're going if you don't know the story and you just want to get the the emotions that the song selections can bring to you but when you look for the emotional weight for the characters to have it is so absent that's how the color purple feels color purple feels it feels just so absent i never fully believed that Seely was struggling in this movie, which is weird. I, I never believe uh, Suge Avery and Taraji is an amazing actress. But again, it's just something that didn't translate for me. Maybe for other people it will, but for me, none of it translated into any emotional depth of the characters. And when you have a film like The Color Purple that so many people are going to be invested in, because they grew up with this story, they grew up with this film, and whether whether good or bad, where where you can't talk about any adaptation of the color purple without bringing up the controversies behind the color purple and why for a certain group of black people this is never going to be something they would ever watch, and it does not reflect black men in the best light possible. But beyond those controversies, when you just look at it as a film. The film just lacks emotional depth. I don't know if it's the actor's performances. I don't know if maybe Blitz was not the right director for this project. That could be it. It it just feels like something's missing. If you ever seen a film that feels like it hits every note humanly possible, but it's something missing. And because of that, something missing is not nearly entertaining enough for it to be a repeat viewing. Or for you just to sit through it once and be fully entertained. You can feel something's missing. That's how this film felt. It always felt like it was something missing. Even down to a pivotal scene. If if you've seen The Color Purple and you've seen the dinner table scene in The Color Purple. And you know exactly the emotions that, it, that are on display at that table. Especially if you've seen the film. Because there was a lot of emotion at that table in the film. Here, it just fell flat. It just did did nothing. It, it's a lot of stuff that happens here where it just feels like they're just going through the numbers. They're going through the things that make the color purple the color purple. Then we get a big musical number and then we bring it back to a story that is at best executed subparly. But the song aspects of it are amazing. You have amazing singers here. You have amazing performance here. So those elements, they can knock out the park. But it's almost like someone forgot to bring the emotion into this story. And without that emotion, I don't necessarily, un I don't as know if this is a color purple that I could recommend anyone seeing because I felt nothing watching it. It just went, like if, if perhaps, if I never saw the first movie and this is your first introduction to the color purple, maybe this can work for you. But anyone who's seen the film or read the book and you kind of know that the movie, the original film, was kind of a watered-down version of the book. And then the play, when it, especially when it first hit Broadway, I want to say in 07, 08, it was kind of a watered-down version of the film. And it just didn't feel as right. So some of the original flaws that you had in the original Broadway production of The Color Purple are very much on display in this movie. So when they did the revival of it and they attempted to correct a lot of those issues and put a stronger actress in the key central role here, and then you did at that point have Diana Brooks play Sophia and with her and Cynthia playing off of each other, it was magic. Here, it's it's Miss Brooks putting on a one-woman show. When she's on screen as Sophia, 
you, you you're captivated you're engaged she's her her charisma's at a thousand when she's off the screen everything falls flat and that's the central issue for me with this film is again it does not have the emotional depth that I think this story definitely has to have for it to be executed properly. It's going to give you the big numbers. It's going to give you the big songs. It's going to give you the moments with the big songs that are, I mean, to me, are put there for award seasons. But as it pertains as a film, this is not nearly as strong as it should be. But it kind of goes to the trend of when you turn in these Broadway shows into films and that transition from musical to film, it it always loses something. You just hoped here, because this started as a movie first, that it was possible that we wouldn't fall into the same traps of a Chicago, The Nine, Rent, <laughs> like all of these adaptations of musicals to film, that they fell into that trap, and then it was so, so much lesser than what you ever expected it to be, that it became kind of become something you may see in the moment and never watch again. That's how it feels with The Color Purple. If you're going to watch a version of The Color Purple, you're still going to watch the original movie. I don't think this movie has any saying power past possible the award season run is going to go on because, again, big song, big selections. Uh, playing Sophia, that is a role that is almost guaranteed to give you awards attention. Almost playing Celia at this point could give you awards attention even if you're not the best at it here so <clears throat> beyond amazing song selections and cinematography that's out of this world all the dance numbers all the big song numbers all of it looks bright vivid and amazing but then when you get to the actual story when you get to the emotional aspects of the story everything is missing and i for me Having Color Purple without a villain that you believe makes it even harder. I, it, it's so much to live up to. And hopefully this will give people an understanding of just how great Danny Glover is. When he played Mr., he played it so well that you hated him for years afterwards. Here, with this version of Mr., you just feel bad for him. It's it, he, he, he comes across as just someone who you just wish would do better, but you don't really care about. So it, like, without that main villain and uh, Seely being the emotional center of the film, you get 2023's version of the Color Purple. So Color Purple brought to you by Warner Brothers. This drops on Christmas Day because this is a film that I'm assuming that families are going to want to see. It's musical very touchy subject matter I, I don't know i don't get the christmas release date here but <laughs> it comes out on christmas day out of a possible 10 i am going to give color purple a 5.5 5 out of 10 big musical numbers amazing musical numbers cinematographies out of this world there is no emotion in this film i felt absolutely nothing watching this film and at this point i've seen it a couple of times because the first time i saw it I thought this was possibly one of the worst films I've seen this year. And I happened to watch it again. And I could appreciate it a little more than the first time I saw it. Because the first time I saw it, I had so many expectations because how much I love the original movie. Even the play, which I've seen five times. <laughs> like, the play was never great, but it, it pushed through just enough to get you entertained. And when you got the revival of the play, it really improved so much over the original production. And here, it almost feels like they just decided, eh, we're just going to give you the original production. The one that, yes, it made money. It broke box office numbers. But it just didn't have the emotional weight for it. And this film suffers the same fate. But check it out on Christmas Day when it drops and let us know what you think. This has been another JVS Movie Review. Peace, people.